Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe, and I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. Click the link in the description to wishlist that game, and if you want a free copy of Pinstripe, you can support on Patreon. That would really mean a lot to me. For the last three months, I have been transitioning from 2D, which is kind of my forte, and moved into 3D, and that's Blender, Unity, and a little bit of Photoshop. Now the thing is, is that 3D is really challenging if you have no idea how it works. But once I figured it out, it kind of clicked and there were some basic core principles that I wanna share with you. So let's jump into Blender to start and I wanna show you how it's done. But first, before we get started guys, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible website for you guys to learn about pretty much anything you wanna learn about. Specifically, if you want to learn about game design, it's an incredible place. Whether it's audio design for your games, or 2D illustration, or animation, or Unreal, coding, storytelling, marketing, business, management, whatever it is you need to learn about game development, it's on Skillshare. One of my favorite courses is by Rusty Smith, and it just covers Unity basics. The coolest part about this ad read is, hey, get two free months of Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. You really can't beat that, guys. Give it a shot, see what happens. I love Skillshare, it's a great way to learn about game development. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm, I'm gonna do plenty in this tutorial that isn't, you know, perfectly industry standard, but overall, you can see that we can accomplish a lot um, just with some basic knowledge of Blender. So what we're going to do is delete our head crab and we're going to start fresh. Um, what we want to do first is we want to add a mesh and you're going to want to use a UV sphere because it's made of quads, not tries. And quads are pretty much industry standard. A quad is basically these squares here as opposed to triangles. So our mesh is made, of, made up of a bunch of those. Now we can choose down here um, how many segments we want and how many rings we want. Usually you want your segments to be double your rings so that you get even clean squares um, or quads. So that looks great. We're just going to hit enter um, on that 28. What am I doing here? We're going to just let it be. We don't need to click enter. Okay. <laughs> let's move our sphere up. And the first thing we want to do, guys, is let's get to front view. So just hit one on your numpad. And what we want to do is we want to go into modeling mode. So click this tab here, and this is going to allow us to actually edit the faces and the edges. So we're going to select the vertex selection tool here, and then we're going to press X on the keyboard. And X is, you're going to use it so many times. So I'm going to make sure you guys know that hotkey. So X is going to delete, and we can delete the vertices here. And what that's going to allow us to do is actually what we want to do, go back in time here, this is the wireframe mode. So we're going to select wireframe mode and we're just going to press X on our keyboard and delete the vertices. And now you can see we have a half sphere. Now this is important because we want to put on mirror mode. So let's go to our modifiers here, it's this little uh, wrench, and we're going to go to the modifiers and turn on mirror. And as you can see now, we have a perfect mirror here. Um, and so whatever edit we make on one side is going to be made on the other side. So that is perfect. Um, let's go to our wireframe mode again and press one on the numpad. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to scale down all of these at the bottom because we want it to look like this. So half sphere and then the bottom is sort of flat. So let's get a good reference image. This one looks pretty good right here. So it's sort of a half sphere. So let's press S, sorry, let's press S on the keyboard here. We're going to scale down, but we're only going to scale in the Y direction, or the Z direction, I'm sorry. So we're going to scale down, squash it on the Z, and then scale, uh, bring it up, pressing G. There we go, and only along the Z axis, so it, it uh, moves very smoothly along the vertical. So we can move it up like that, scale it down, and then my favorite part of doing a head crab is if you select one point here, and you click this button here, which is the proportional editing button. If we click that, what it means is that if we move it, it's gonna move other stuff around it. And you can see the sphere right here. That sphere you can actually control with your mouse wheel, and it tells you how much proportion of editing is going to occur. 
So I think something like this looks great. And we want to make sure that we can move it right along um, the axis here. Now one way of doing that so that it doesn't cross over into the other side of the mirror is you can just press Z on your keyboard and you're going to move it up. The other way you can do that is go to clipping. Make sure clipping is selected on your modifier, your mirror modifier, and if I try and go over, it's never going to let me go over. So that's one way of doing it. So now we have this sort of mouth um, that we can use um, inside of our head crab. So that looks great. Now the last thing I want to do is go to side view mode. And what I want to do is I want to scale down the front portion of his face. So if I select something like this, this is where his teeth are going to be. I can actually press the S key and scale down his face, move it up a little bit. And again, we're using the proportional editing. So it's moving other things along with these faces we've selected. And what we want to do with the back is same thing, but we're going to scale it up and then move it over. So we're going to have this sort of squashed looking pointy face. And if we go to press seven on the numpad, we're going to go to top view. So we can select these, sort of bring it up a little bit just like that. And then let's get these hind legs just a little bit more um, wide. That looks great. So overall, I think our head crap looks awesome. Head crap. Head crab looks awesome. Um, definitely nothing to complain about here. But as you can see, we're trying to keep things pretty even with our quads. We want pretty evenly spaced quads. I don't know what's going on there, but we can actually turn off proportional editing and just make that move over just a little bit. So you want everything to look smooth. Um, and that's called topology. And I'm not an expert. My subscribers will tell you I'm not an expert at topology. Um, but topology is basically how you um, lay out your mesh so that it looks smooth um, and that the lines follow the contours of your shapes. Um, and your meshes. So there is our head crab. Overall, I think he looks just fine. The next thing we're going to do is the teeth. Now the teeth are my favorite part. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take these faces here. And there's, I guess, six teeth. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these faces and what I want to do is actually subdivide these faces here. Edge here and then go to subdivide. And now what you can see is we have um, a lot more faces to work with. And the reason why we want to do this, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, and I'm sure plenty, many of you in the audience have a better idea of how we're going to do this. Um, but we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Transform to Sphere. And what that does is it's slowly going to, as I move my mouse further and further away, it's going to try and create a sphere out of these uh, faces here. And you'll notice that this quad is now a little bit confused and that's definitely okay. So what we're going to do is press X, delete that face. Don't worry. What we're going to do is just fill in that and this. I think that's a reasonable use of a quad or a try. So we're going to do the same thing to the rest of these faces here. Now what we want to do is we want to extrude out the teeth. Now you'll notice that if we try and extrude this tooth out and that tooth, everything actually looks pretty good. But the problem is, let me show you. What we want to do is extrude this out and then scale it down. But you'll see that these are actually connected and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create an inset. So press I and bring it in. So that, is, that, that will allow us to actually have an inset so that we can actually extrude out and have separate teeth that they're not connected. Now you'll notice we have sort of an extra um, edge here. I'm not too worried about that actually because what you can actually do with that is sort of bring in all of these faces. If you wanted to, bring it in so that it has a sort of caved in look which actually looks kind of cool. I really like that. Um, we could do the same with this point here, just like this. So overall, that looks pretty cool. So let's do the same thing with these teeth here. So we're going to select those. We're going to inset just a little bit. There we go. And then let's actually just move it in already and then extrude down. Same thing for these guys. Press I and then inset it in or uh, press G and then move it in. 
and then extrude out. So far, so good. And what I wanna do is actually spherize just a little bit more. So let's go to our mesh transform to sphere and create a little bit more of a sphere shape. Um, and again, obviously it's not gonna be a perfect sphere because we don't have a ton of, um, ton of vertices, but I think overall that looks pretty cool. Sweet. All right, so we have our teeth here. And what I'm gonna do is select our faces again, and we can just select them all here. And we can extrude them out one more time. Let's go to our side view here. Extrude those out, press G, and then we're going to do something here that is very interesting. We're gonna first scale them down, extrude out one more time, press G. There we go. And those are a little bit long here. Let's go back in time. G, scale down. Press G or uh, E one more time, G, scale down. There we go. And what we can do is actually um, merge all of these vertices together. So you see all of these? We can select them all and go to Alt M, Alt M, and merge them there at the center. So it's gonna bring all of our lines down together. Very good. So far it looks pretty cool. Now a lot of you are probably wondering, Thomas, why do we want multiple faces or these vertices here? Well, I want them so that I can get a little bit more control over the shape here. And obviously there's a more professional way to do this, but I think overall this is fine for our creature. And we can bring the teeth closer to the center. Same with these, rotate a little bit, yep, just like that. That looks pretty good here. There we go, rotate. And then I want these teeth on the side to be a little smaller. It's almost like fingers, right? So just scale that down, and there we go. So now we have some very creepy looking teeth. These front two teeth kind of look like buck teeth, so we're gonna scale those down just a little bit. Go to front view, there we go, and rotate them a little bit towards each other. So overall, pretty creepy looking. I think what we could do is bring down that the size on the right. So what we can do is just go back to proportional editing, scale down just a little, and then bring them closer. Yep, just like that. Maybe the top as well. Um, let's do a scale along the z-axis and then bring it down. Here we go. Maybe bring these just a little bit closer. Scale. Here we go, G. And scale those. Here we go, G. Let's see how the shading looks here. All right, it looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but I think overall it definitely gets the point across. We can bring these up just a little bit as well. And maybe what we could do, let's go to side view here, wireframe mode, and let's just bring these teeth up a little bit, scale them down, turn off proportional editing, scale them up, there we go. So far, so good. That's a weird looking head crab, I like it. And this is one of my favorite parts of doing characters, what we're about to do here. I'm actually going to um, create a joint or a sphere right here. So what we're gonna do is actually select our faces here. And we're going to do an inset by pressing I. So we can inset here just like that. And we can actually just delete or actually just merge all of these faces together by pressing F. Now that's gonna merge all of our faces together. But what I wanna make sure I do is I actually flatten it. So I can press F3 and then type in flatten, and you'll see that I have a add-on called flatten, and you can find this in your add-ons. If you go to edit preferences, you'll see we have an add-on right here called loop tools, and that's gonna allow us to flatten um, our mesh so that it's a bit more straight, so you can see it's now flat. Now, don't worry, I know this is, um, not a quad, I know this is more than a quad, which is called an N-GON. And you don't usually want to use an N-GON like this. Don't worry, we're actually going to extrude it out and move it to a point so it won't actually be this. But now what we want to do is go to Mesh Transform to Sphere. And now we can create a sphere shape just like this. 
and then move it out just a tad, just like that. And I want to have things look a little bit more even here. So we can just move these to be more of a sphere shape, just like that. So now we can create his arms. Let's scale it up just a little bit and move it out just a tad. Great. That looks good. What we're going to do is first extrude out just a little piece here and rotate it towards the camera. There we go, and rotate it just like that. And then we're going to extrude it out and then just slowly start moving it forward and scaling down. There we go. And we'll fix this portion here. It's a little too wide. But overall, if we go to side view mode here, go to rotate, I want to make sure we're rotating along with these joints. Now again, you'll notice that this is a little bit warped. What you can do is again, press F3 and then go to flatten and you'll see it now flattened our face here, which looks really good. Let's go to front view here and let's see here. Yeah, let's rotate it a little bit like that. Now with your joints, you want to make sure you have plenty um, of faces to work with. Um, so what I like to do is extrude out multiple times with a joint just like that and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a second and then we're just gonna extrude out one more time scale it down press G and extrude 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 give us plenty of room with our joints extrude out again scale down rotate and th this front portion isn't actually gonna rotate that much so all we're gonna do is extrude out one more time and what I mean by rotate is our armature isn't going to bend at this point. So we don't really need to worry too much about this mesh having these amount of faces. So let's scale it down. Actually, what we'll do is just go to vertex, merge vertices and center. And now we have his arms. So far it looks pretty good. I think this is a little weird right here. So to select an edge loop again, make sure you have your edge selection tool selected and then hold alt and then select and then just scale it down and then we're gonna rotate it just a tad. And let's flatten this one as well. So again, flatten, there we go. Looks pretty good. Let's see here, how could I, yeah, we'll move it out just a little bit, just like that. And let's see here, what I wanna do with these joints here is we're actually gonna select holding Alt here. Here we go. And we're just gonna scale it up just like that. We'll select these as well. Hold on one sec, there we go. And we're gonna scale it in the, let's see here, just scale it down just a bit, move it closer. Actually, what we can do is just select this line here, press G, and then I'll give it more of a seam look. There we go. Move it towards there, there we go, that looks great. And we'll scale this one down. So now we have joints. Great, that looks kinda of cool, I like that. And the same is true with this foot here. We can just take that, scale it up, take that, scale it up just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks good. Scale up, bring these closer. Yeah. Okay, I think that joint looks pretty good. Let's do this actually. Let's select this one here and move it just like that. Give us a little bit more room. There we go. So now we have our joints and I think we could actually scale this, hold on one sec here, scale this up. And I actually think we need more joints in this area. So the way that we do this is press Control R, that's gonna allow us to create an edge loop. And we can actually click and then drag and move it up here. And we'll do one here as well. This allows us to create those joints if we didn't already create them. So let's select all of these edge loops here. Rotate them, let's actually rotate this one a little bit closer there. Um, scale it down, move it down a little bit. Just slowly, there we go. All right, scale that up a little bit. Scale this up, move it just like this, that looks good. Actually kinda like, there we go, that looks pretty good to me. Um, and then this one we could probably scale up as well. There we go, just like that. Maybe we could actually rotate it. There we go. And what we can do is move this point up just a little bit. There we go. All right, so we have our legs. So if we go to our layout mode, we can actually look at it. Let's put on Shade Smooth. So if we right click on our model here and go to Shade Smooth, 
it actually smooths it out for us. So I love how we've created some, some uh, creases here on his teeth that makes the teeth look like they're sort of embedded in his body. So far that looks pretty good. But if we look at our, let's see here, where is our head crab? If we look at our head crab here, he sort of has these creepy looking nubs for feet. This one is a really good model too. So you can see they're just almost just like cylinders coming out of his body. I think we need to actually do it about right here. So let's select all of those. We could probably even get away with doing it like that as well. And what we're gonna do is inset. Here we go, just like that. Fill them all in and we're gonna flatten. And again, you wouldn't wanna do this if you were just filling in this spot, but because we're gonna be extruding and then moving it down to a square, we actually don't need to worry too much right now about this being a weird end gone. So let's just flatten it and then we're gonna extrude it or press G, bring it out, rotate it out just a tad, there we go. Just like that. And we're gonna extrude it down slowly um, and we're gonna slowly merge the vertices together as well. But let's make it look more like a sphere. So again, we go to mesh, transform to sphere, there we go. And let's try that one more time. There we go, there we go, I like that. Okay, so that bottom portion is a little bit weird. Um, so let's do this. And in fact, guys, I think it'll be a lot easier for my brain for me to just delete that face entirely because it's definitely looking a little bit weird. Um, but let's try and even out all of these vertices here. Always be thinking about the distance between vertices and the distance between faces and all that good stuff. Um, there we go. You don't want it to be too random. And I've, I'm guilty of that, just like anybody. I'm, I've been very haphazard with my layout of my vertices and the sizes of my faces, um, but so don't worry too much, but it's good to it's good to make it look like that. That looks pretty good. And we can definitely bring these down to make it feel a little bit more like it's flesh. There we go. And bring these down as well. Good, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have this little nub here. Um, so let's extrude it down one more time, rotate it, and then do like this, scale it. It's looking good, and then we're gonna extrude it like straight down. <laughs> there we go, press G. And remember guys, you can flatten this. So go to F3, flatten. And now it's a perfectly smooth circle. And we'll just need to rotate it um, along the uh, Y. Yeah, there we go. And then a little bit along the X, and now it's flat. Square, or square with the ground. And then we're gonna go to scale, and I think that looks pretty decent. Um, what we can do is we can create these little nubs here. So what we can do is control R, create an edge loop, create another edge loop, like that, and scale it up, just like that. We could probably move it back just a tad too. Scale it down just a little bit. And we're gonna scale this down and then bring it forward just a tad, okay? So we have his legs here. Let's select this edge loop and get to front view and actually scale it so that we can't really see it. There we go. And we also want to flatten that as well. There we go. And then flatten this as well. See how there's a little bit of an angle there? I'd like to flatten that. So F3, flatten, there we go. And then F3 again. Remember, F3 is how you search for a command. Okay, something happened here. I'm not sure what happened there. But overall, I'm not too worried. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, we could probably move his legs back. So let's go to wireframe mode, select these points here, and then we can select proportional editing, and press G, scale it down. There we go. Let's go to side view here. Actually, we'd like to rotate it a little bit, um, and then turn off proportional editing, and then rotate this back down. There we go. This butt here is a little bit weird, so we're just gonna move that up, rotate it just a tad. Just, let's do proportional editing for that as well. So turn on proportional editing, G. And with proportional editing, again, if I use the scroll wheel, I can get more specific and tighter. There we go. And just move that in just a tad there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think those these hind legs are a little bit too thick, so let's just scale them in the uh, 
Let's see here, scale them in the Y. There we go, and then scale them in the X, there we go. Okay, cool. So head crab looks pretty cool. Let's go to our layout mode just so we can look at him. Um, overall, he looks pretty good. We're gonna move those hind legs a little bit more to the back. So let's just do that really quickly here. Proportional editing, just like so. Press S and then scroll wheel up just a tad. There we go. Thicken them up a little bit and take that edge loop and scale that up. There we go. And I feel like we still need to be moving and back just a bit here. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just rotate around, make sure everything looks good. You could probably, uh, you could probably make these up just a tad there. Yeah, so you sort of want it to, the shape to slowly um, morph into the um, the shape of the, the limb here. So we're slowly moving around, uh, creating sort of a circle around here. So that looks pretty good. All right. So far so good. It's not perfect, that's a little bit weird, but I think you get the point. Just move that in just a tad. So one final thing I like to show you is if I actually want to create sort of a seam so that it looks like he's got an actual mouth underneath here or a hole, what we can do is actually select this edge ring here. What we can actually do is press Control B here and create a bevel. And there we go. We could also press Control R and create a edge loop. But I think that looks pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is actually select this entire ring here. And then I'm just going to move it up just like that. See that? In fact, what I want to do is select this one as well. So Alt, click, hold shift, Alt, click, Alt, click. So we're selecting all of those. And we're going to move them all up, creating a sort of mouth right there. That looks pretty cool. And we don't want to forget about this little piece here as well. So we're just going to move that up. Pretty good. Something's going on right there. Let's move that out. There we go. And then finally, we're going to select this edge loop here and we're going to scale it down. Let's see here. Yeah. There we go. Scale it down into a sort of a creepy mouth. I love it. And move that back along the y axis. There we go. We could probably move these up just a bit too forward along the Y axis. There we go. And let's create a little bit more round shape. So again, control B, bevel, and then bevel it. Let's see here. What you can actually do is bevel and then do the scroll wheel and it can tell you how many iterations of that bevel we want. So I think that's all we want to do right here. And then if I select this, can scale it down just a, a little bit more and that gives us that lip look that kind of looks weird there so let's uh, just select those and just move them forward just a tad so far so good there we go let's try and select that up there there it is all right so there we go I think overall our head grab looks pretty cool. Let's see here. Let's look for any missing pieces or vertices that are misaligned. So this one here is, he's acting a little bit funny, isn't he? Let's delete him and then just fill in like so. Oops, fill that in. This will have to be a try, which I'm fine with because it's underneath the belly. We don't really get to see him anyway. Um, so there you go. So let's actually go to our layout mode and take a look at our head crab. Looks pretty cool. What we're really missing is some seams. So I wanna cover really quickly how we can create some seams in the flesh. A seam here would be really cool. Kinda like what we have going on here. 
So what we do to get a seam is, again, just go to your modeling mode, select your edge loop, and in this case, our edge loop kind of got lost, and that's okay. So we're gonna select this entire loop here. There we go. And what we're gonna do is that bevel. So we're gonna bevel, here we go. And we're gonna do two iterations of that bevel. So just do the scroll wheel just like that, there we go. And now what we can do is scale this down like that, see that? So we're creating a sort of seam in the flesh. That looks really cool. Um, we could do the same thing here if we wanted to, select this edge loop, press Control B, move it up, and then only select this portion here and scale it down, create a sort of seam, which I think looks really cool and just move it up, there we go. Now, one final thing here that you wanna be careful of, and I know a lot of you have probably been thinking this the entire time I'm modeling this. If we wanna do a um, any weight painting or any animation, you wanna be sure that you're having sort of an even distribution of quads. So you can see we have these really long quads here. So let's just put, press Control R, and we can just create a few quads here. In fact, let's do one a little bit closer, there we go. What you could do is actually just press Control R and then do the scroll wheel, and that's gonna create some quads for us. So we'll do the same thing here, and the same thing here. Whoops. We could probably do two. We could probably get away with two down here, actually. There we go. And one down here. So we have our quads evenly distributed down the leg, and we could do the same here, and same here. Very good. Even distribution of quads, and probably around the teeth too. So one there, one there, one there, one there, and again, I'm pressing Control R. All right. So I think we have a pretty even distribution of quads. Looks, looks fine. It's definitely not industry, like, professionally, 3D made, but I think if you're an indie dev, these are the basics and this will definitely get you pretty far along um, when you're creating models. So my favorite part of modeling is adding the subdivision surface modifier right here. And what that's gonna do is figure out where to add additional vertices and really smooth it out. So now it looks you know, something like a, from a Pixar movie. It's very smooth, looks great, and I didn't have to do any work. And again, guys, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but you wanna start with a pretty low poly count so that you can do things like this at the end. You don't wanna start with a high poly count. So overall, he looks like a smooth head crab. We could probably fix this seam here a little bit but I'm not gonna do that in this video. <laughs> it looks like a spine, that's what it is. That's a little spine. All right, guys, that's, that's our head crab. If you liked this video or you have questions or whatever, there's plenty of things you can do below this video. Leave a comment, subscribe, all those cool things. And remember, guys, you can support on Patreon if you want uh, and get a free copy of my game, Pinstripe. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.